Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a new episode of um, my show, Meet the Changemaker. Today, we have the honor to meet, uh, to talk to a, another another change maker um, all the way from Nigeria. She's she's finally called Dr. Ma, and she's a university professor in philosophy. So um, Dr. Ma and I, we we connected recently and um and I really like what she does. Um she studied philosophy at Emo State University Orari with uh, first class honors and um her full name will be Dr. Chidima Ekia. I hope I say that correctly. <laughs> is that correct? Or you want yes, to say your oh thank you. She's also did her master in philosophy at Namdi Azikiwe University with a first class honor and a postgraduate diploma in education at Usmandan Fodio University, Sokoto. Um, so Dr. Ma is also, so she's a lecturer, she's a researcher, um, an author, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and farmer. So, uh, no further ado, I would like you to hear from Dr. Ma. Dr. Ma, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Jess. And welcome. good evening from my good side. Evening. Yes, that's, I'm so excited to have you today um, at this, in this new episode. Could you briefly, you know, I, I kind of touch on who you are, but could you elaborate more or tell to our audience who you are and um, tell us more about your country and tell us about your background? Okay, thank you very much once again, Dr. Jess. I am, just like you have said, I'm Dr. Chidima Ikea, popularly known as Dr. Ma. I am a Nigerian. I was born and raised in Nigeria, in Abia and Imo state, respectively. These two states are in the eastern part of Nigeria. So I was born and raised in Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian. I'm also a lecturer at a lecturer of philosophy mm -hmm. at Imo State University, Nigeria, a researcher, an entrepreneur, a farmer, a wife, and also a mother mm -hmm. to four children. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when it comes to research works, I am into research and teaching. Especially, I'm interested in impacting knowledge in young people, more mm -hmm. especially undergraduates and also some postgraduates alike. I teach them philosophy and philosophy, which can be seen as, you know, the love of wisdom. In other words, it helps oh. one to develop mm -hmm. critical thinking as well as live an upright life in order to attain a happiness. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So, I have philosophy is actually a, I would say a, a a subject. I I had one in high school, and wow. I and went to high school at home in Cameroon. And I remember getting good mark. I remember enjoying because I enjoy writing, and I think that if you enjoy writing, you're you're a thinker. Um, you know, it's natural for you. Philosophy is a great subject, so um, I really yeah. like that. I remember liking it. I didn't go very, very far. So wow. tell us, uh, before we go back to, you know, the professional part, I would like us to know uh, how was it to grow up in Nigeria? And sorry if I just say Nigeria, I don't want to say the wrong state, but please be as precise as you can uh, for our audience so they may understand. I myself, I would love to know more about um, what it is to grow up as a girl in um, okay yeah okay growing up as a girl is interesting <laughs> exciting and also challenging okay mm -hmm. now let me begin with the interesting aspects i grew up in a family of six mm -hmm. i was i happened to be the third child okay now mm -hmm. I had elder ones, elder siblings, as well as younger siblings. So the elder one, definitely I learned from them. And also they protected, they were kind of 
they protected me quite all right. So while my younger ones to I kind of protected them. So it was an interesting experience growing up in the midst of both elder ones and younger ones. Now, as a female, as a girl, mm -hmm. growing up, one had that conscious, I had that consciousness as a girl, because you'll always, it, it, just like a philosopher called George Beckley would say, SAS specific, to be is to be perceived. So for me to live, I was perceived, I lived. To, I was conscious of my identity as a girl. So, and I had to do everything to protect my identity as a girl. So growing up, the, the, the challenging aspect in the sense that, you know, as a, a girl child in the society, there is how the society looks at a girl. It is usually believed that training a girl, girls we are, or women, we are generally seen as birds of passage whom it wasn't necessary to train. And in the society, having my parents who were more, they were learning, they were the working class. My mom was, a, a, is, my mom is a retired banker. My father was a, a teacher, a principal of a school. So there was that discipline. There was, you know, you, you, you were expected to carry out, to, to be conscious of the family name, okay? Now, mm -hmm. one is not expected, even when you're associating, when you're connecting with people, you always have that consciousness in order to always have the, the, the family name mm -hmm. to be protected. You don't want to, you know, come out shameful and in those days when when my mom grew up from her background she grew up in the midst of they were more like more girls and few boys they had like three boys and mm -hmm. during that time they 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 were saying that it was not necessary training a girl child and but her her father her parents trained them to be successful so she will always encourage us her children to always aim high you know, to be successful in life, you know? So she was my number one role model. Then gaining, I, I went to school in the Eastern part of Nigeria, both my primary school, secondary, and the part of postgraduate, graduate and postgraduate studies. Now, I remember um, during my secondary school, you know, choosing a career was not easy because one of the challenges I faced and having a, 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 a teacher as a parent, my father had always wanted me to study, to, to, to go into the science sciences as a field. And mm -hmm. then I was interested in arts. I was good in literature, government, and the likes. But mm -hmm. he was, you know, being a chemistry uh, teacher, he, he read chemistry. He was, he wanted all his children, you know, to follow the path of sciences. So I remember... Mm -hmm. Then he, 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 you know, he wanted to impose it on me for me to that I must do, I must be a science student. And it was not, I was not comfortable with that. So growing up, I was, despite that I was a little girl, but I was, I was not timid. I was a girl that would always go for what she wanted. Okay, during that period. So I remember then in Nigeria, we had the, the secondary the junior secondary classes and the senior secondary classes. So during the senior secondary classes, one is expected to choose your subject and you'll be asked what you want to be in future. You know, from there, they will put you either in, a art, in an arts or science class. So yeah. I remember that time he will ask me, have you not started choosing your class, your courses? I said, your subjects rather. I said, no. And inside me, we have started choosing. So I was <laughs> ready. Yes. So I had to... Quietly, I chose my subjects. I chose the art subject and I wrote there that I wanted to be a lawyer and I was put in this, in an arts class. So mm. when the when we are now uh, promoted to the new class, he was not happy. So inside me, I was like, okay, let him flog me as usual, but I have achieved my aim. <laughs> so, yes, and in my house, I'm the only art student. I'm the only person that did arts. And, yeah. and I am unapologetic yes. about that because as I am, I'm fulfilled. 
because I don't, mm -hmm. I'm not good when it comes to calculations so, and the rest of them. Yeah. Okay? So since, since you are a low girl, you have, it sounds like you really, you, you can feel in your being that you, 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 you know how to, uh, or not necessarily directly confront the authority or, but to have your way in a way that you do have your way with that, you know, uh, I would say intelligently, because that was, I know, I mean, what you did, people may not realize, uh, myself being born and raised in Cameroon and uh, being an African woman, uh, going against your parents' wish and your dad's wish, it's huge. And we are not saying that you went against, but choosing your path, being able to say, this is my choice, and being a girl while doing that, it just show how strong inside of you you knew what you want and you said that's my life that's my choice and i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna make Thank that choice. You. i salute <laughs> you and there's Thank some you. there's some overlapping here for me in your story um just uh, to say that uh, also in cameroon uh, i run a certain time especially uh that you, you are asked to select what kind of path you want to go some more science or art and uh, i wish i did choose art i did science but i end up becoming a humanity person. That's what we say here, uh, being communication. I think I should have chosen the arts, but uh, I've done what I've done, I, what I've done. But I think that, yeah, it's unfortunately, it's also opened another door of conversation. We don't have to get into why we we tend to, as parents in on the continent, why parents tend to impose the wish and, 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 and why is art not seen as viable? So those are questions that uh, we can explore another time, maybe another conversation, oh, but here uh, as educators, you, uh, but I want to continue with your story and and say that uh, certainly you, you you remember being very challenging because you're a girl. And I, and briefly, you have three brothers and how many sisters? No, I have, I have two brothers. Two brothers, okay. And three sisters because my, one of my sisters, uh, they are twins. Oh! <laughs> Yeah, so. okay, okay. Oh my goodness. What a beautiful family. So okay. uh, moving forward with, you know, you, you, you went to school, you chose your path pretty early art. Um, could you tell us how did you get to choose philosophy? Okay. So, <laughs> so after my secondary school now, the, we have the A level and the O level, the A level prepares one into the university. So after my A level, my result was seized. Okay. So I had to miss that year. And I had wanted to either be a lawyer or study mass communication. Okay. So yeah, so I had to write the second uh, A level examination. And my score was not so high for me to gain law. So in Nigerian university, there is what is called supplementary. That supplementary form is an alternative. For people who could not get the the primary admission so i had to go in for psychology so but i didn't know how i got philosophy philosophy was just will i say it was by chance okay mm -hmm. then even when i got the admission i was like what's this philosophy i said okay maybe after my first year i can now switch over to law then, but after my first year, I was already enjoying the course and my grade was becoming so high. So I had to go to a counselor. So the counselor encouraged me that I should continue with philosophy since I'm doing well and I'm understanding what I'm doing. That maybe in the future, when I'm done with philosophy, I can still go in for law. So when I finished with philosophy with a distinction, I still continue with my master's degree. Then did a postgraduate diploma in education, then my doctorate. But mm -hmm. I got my, I started teaching when I was about completing my master's degree. Mm -hmm. My school, you know, the vice chancellor then was kind of recruiting and he was interested in recruiting students or graduates that made distinctions. So I got the information and applied. And that was how I got my lecturing job that was how i started teaching so from there i was at the verge of completing my masters i completed then i also did my doctorate there mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. oh beautiful 
Well, that's Thank very you. amazing. Um, the so you're also the chapter president of the Circle of Global Business Women. Yeah. You tell yeah. us more about that. Well, Circle of Global Business Women knows for women entrepreneurs who are interested in developing themselves. So it's all about, you know, business is not just like as I'm teaching and I'm also doing something outside, um, something outside my, my work. So in other words, it is good for every woman to aspire, even, even if you're depending on your salary, but at least for you to get something additional. Okay, because the society, let, let me use Nigeria, for example, if you keep depending on your salary, you see that one may, 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 may go, go, go hungry one day. So Circle of Business Global Women is a forum whereby it encourages women who are into business. You know, you learn ID, get ideas, improve on yourself, attend seminars, and the rest of them. And then is it an organization you created or you joined? How long have you been part of the organization? Okay, I joined it last year. Mm. Yes, it's, a, it's a, an international organization. Okay. We are, yes, not just for Nigerians alone. Mm. I joined the organization. We have the ones for Nigerians. We have the ones for non-Nigerians. Okay, mm -hmm. then from there... I was made the president for Nigerian chapter. Congrats, congrats. Uh, <laughs> um, and how many people, how many women are in your chapter in Nigeria? So they are so numerous. Mm -hmm. Let me say over hundred uh members of that. Yeah, over. Wow, that's big crowd. I will say, well, that's pretty and uh, do you have a so you mentioned entrepreneurship? Do you have your own business besides lecturing? Yes. Or you are working on it. Yes, yeah, the name of my business is Kama Food Shop. Uh huh. And what yes. does it do? What do you, what is it? What is the, your business about? It's just um and more like, like an online business where women usually for women too, because women are it's usually women that take care of the home when it comes to food and food matters. Mm -hmm. So there we, you know, kind of we make contributions. We get the foodstuffs and share. Okay, mm -hmm. so. At least the, the business is over two years now. Mm -hmm. So if someone so, come, come, a woman come with you, what should, what should she expect from your business? I, I'm not really, what are the services you offer? Okay, then, we offer just edible things. Mm -hmm. They are the, we, we share or we buy and sell edible things to women mm -hmm. who are interested and it is kind of cheaper for them compared to what they buy in the market. So it is oh. also... Or a a a for a for a whereby for them whereby you help women to reduce cost. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, you definitely be, between be the president of entrepreneur women and then uh being even having your business, your intent is so noble. Where you want to make positive change in other people life, in women life. And what about your role as a lecturer? Um, how do you how could you describe it? What kind of lecturer are you and and um, how many students and have you taught or how long have you been teaching? And you say since your master, which is how long? Just five years ago you started, 10 years ago? Oh, well, I've been teaching over a decade now, about 12 years now, I started wow. teaching. Yes. <laughs> so lecturing is interesting, is, is good, okay? Mm -hmm. And also it has its own challenges too, mm -hmm. because there is nothing on air that doesn't have a challenge yes. so one dealing with young people is not easy it is not easy to deal with young people to, to handle with handling young people is very difficult so mm. and i started teaching at a very young age too so sometimes i remember once sometime i went for like to for, for for my lectures i was there and um, one of the students was calming them down. Please settle down the lecturer. Is down. And one of the, one another student was like, who is the lecturer? You know? And, um, you know, because we are almost the same height mm. and the same stature and all that. So the, the other person said, see her now. And they now looked at me, you know, they were amazed. So because they couldn't believe me that I was the person. So there are some occasions to when you want to teach and 
so some of the stubborn ones, you know, want to kind of will I say they they, they want to yeah, certainly, certainly yeah, certainly a challenge. I don't I don't I'm not telling you to agree with me, but I when I was going getting my master's um, PhD degree, sorry, I personally I'm grateful I have the opportunity to start, you know, learning how to teach. And I also have to say that and I'm pretty, I was pretty vocal about it with my classmates, my peers, uh, my other doctorate student that I could see there was a difference, not just with me, but other, uh, you know, female women uh, students who was in that position of teaching that the student unfortunately taught, uh, taught the, provided more respect to the male, to the men, even though we were the same level, like that's my experience. Do you think that's something you could share? You could say it happened to you, or was it your gender, like you're young, you're a woman, or you appear mm -hmm. young to some of them? Well, you're you're actually right in a way, because just like you said, and coincidentally, I happen to be the only female in my department for over right now? up till now. I'm the only female. I'm serious. Whoa, let me talk for you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yes. So there are some male, there are some colleagues who are male that may feel intimidated by your personality. Okay. That they may want to, you know, start feeling after all, she's a woman, this, that, yeah. you know, why should she have this position? Why should she do this and that? This is, is, is quite challenging. Okay. So lecturing, for you to be a lecturer, one has to be tolerant. Mm -hmm. Both to, towards your 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 students and also your colleagues because you 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 get to meet people with different backgrounds people with different um exposure dispositions and all that so just like we talk about one's passion you know well one of my passion is centered on self-development so you keep i keep improving myself by the day in yeah. order to you know, fitting and also to keep tolerating some of these um people with this their different dispositions. To rise above, because at, at some point um you have to look at it as just those obstacle on your way, but they can you know you you came too far to to yeah. start in those details um run you over and and, and hurt you. So what would be and I I can see you started talking about it. What can you tell about to what can you tell to a young lady in Cameroon, in Nigeria, in Madagascar, anywhere around the continent, who may listen to this and say, wow, it's possible to be a mother, to be um, to be a married wife, a married woman, sorry, a wife, um, but also to have a fulfilling career because you mentioned earlier. So what would be your general advice uh, on to this young lady that is listening to you right now? Who is listening okay. to you? Okay, to every young lady, I will advise that one, every every young lady should set a goal. You should mm -hmm. have your dream, you should have your target. You should the person or the young lady should also set priorities. If the person is not becoming a reverend sister, definitely the person will marry. So and in, in yeah. <laughs> That's really <laughs> yeah. So and if if one wants to settle down, it's important that one should be very careful with whoever mm -hmm. the person wants to settle down with. Okay, just as I always tell my students, always feel free to open, open up a conversation, tell him stories, even if you can even, you know, use a movie, what is happening, tell him stories with his reaction, you will know his kind of person, okay? Mm -hmm. If it will be somebody that will that, that will encourage your dream because mm. one's partner can either make or mar the person. Okay. Definitely. So it's not all about because I noticed that some of these uh, contemporary 21st century women pretend a lot. Some will be like, let me hide myself. Maybe after marriage, mm. you know, I will show my real self. Then I thought I was the me. only one that thought that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you yeah. said that. Yeah. So, but it doesn't work that way. So, mm -hmm. but the most important thing is for you to talk, tell the person your dreams. If he doesn't support it, you know, there is, 
despite that, yes, people pretend, but there is somebody you will meet from the person's reaction, even body movement, you, you know, you can easily know what the person has in mind. Okay. So if the person is supporting your dream, you know, and if the person will not support your dream, you, you, you go for someone, somebody that you share things in common. So that marriage is all about partnership. So when you recognize that this person has, you know, something good for you in mind, and also two of you have something in common, it becomes symbiotic and you see things working smoothly. Okay. So even motherhood, despite that pregnancy and it's the issues associated with pregnancy can be very challenging, but you see that once you have the right partner, it's, mm -hmm. it's, will not be so so difficult for you because you have somebody who is very understanding so the the young women should also be interested in self-development because i discovered that some of these young women they don't even know the young girls the young ladies they don't even know what they have they, they, they don't know what they want some of them don't even know themselves let alone what they want so self-realization is very important in whatever we want to do just like it is said in English that you cannot give what you don't have. And That's a popular philosopher, thank you. And a popular philosopher called Socrates says, man, know thyself. You know, self-knowledge is very vital in whatever one, one is doing. So it is only when you know yourself, then you will now be able to develop yourself. So the young ladies should be able to develop themselves, okay? Because they, in Nigeria now, some of them have mentality, this mentality that just getting a husband marriage is just a destination but most of them do not know that marriage is just a journey okay so when they realize all these things that before one even thinks of going into marriage you should have a mindset an independent mindset of something that you want to, you you have something to offer not just what the man will offer to you so when they begin to change this mindset you see that they will they will go far in life and they will attain happiness okay now also, I still want to talk, I'm after talking about my passion, then when it comes to, what well, another thing that keeps me going is staying, keeping fit and staying strong, okay? Now, because I try every everything I within my reach and within my power to be fit, okay? Mm -hmm. I can read books, even download some apps on my phone, even do some morning exercise to make sure mm -hmm. that I'm fit, because it is only when I'm fit and strong that mm. I'll be able to perform certain tasks. Even in my career, it is only when I'm fit and strong that I, I, I will also be able to, mm. to, to attain that career advancement. That's a wonderful to add that because uh, you Thank just you. provided another topic. Great, great, great point. Um, I, I can just say yes to everything. Uh, the last one though, it's something that uh, for sure myself, I have to realize as well, um, being fit, it's very important. And when mm -hmm. we say by fit, we, you know, we come in different bodies. Everybody is different, literally everybody. So um, the most important is to aim for being healthy. Don't try to be a size, a size two. I mean, there's age for that. There's, if you, you have a child or two, the body changes. What's important is to be healthy, to eat healthy, because it, it affects the whole mind, it affects our, our brain, our soul. So I, I think that's an important point to also highlight, and I would love for us to even talk later, because that's another thing that needs to be part of a wholesome woman. As you say, marriage is a journey. It's not a, de a destination. And um, as much as we celebrate having a, you know, a spouse, He's, he is there to uh, continue that journey called life with us. And um, I would like to say, to briefly say that also that uh, on my end, that's uh, another issue I noticed. Um, sometimes that, um, I, I wasn't sure because for me, it, getting married, full disclosure, it's I just told myself, talking of go, I, when I get my master, then I can talk because I felt like if I have a master degree, I can be self-sufficient. I could meet people, but making that decision, it has to be where you self-actualize, where you're positioned, where you feel you're confident. I'm all for, to, all for a young lady to marry as young as she can, 
But then, why are we going with this contract? This I call it a contract. It's like yeah. it's it's, wow. it's even higher than a job, because okay. a job you can quit. Marriage, oh. quitting. Okay, that should not be an option, I would say. But unless there's other factor like domestic violence and abuses on any part, um, what do you think the young ladies? What do you think we're in a culture uh, where women are seen that way? Is it a conditioning? I want I want to put word in your mouth but i have my answer but i'd like to hear from you what what why we have young lady in 2023 you know still thinking oh wow if i get that man i get married that's it i'm good i can relax i will have children or two but a child or two but you talking about getting phd that's for you over there you're just like nerdy ladies and not i'm not part of that tribe what do you think okay mm -hmm. Okay, is I would say it's sometimes it's cultural. Mm -hmm. You know, culture has to do with one's way of life. Mm -hmm. Just like um the popular writer, Chimaman Dadichie, in one of her books, I think in We Should All Be Feminist, I think that's one of in, in that book, or the other one she wrote on on feminist uh, manifesto. I think that it should be in that book where she was trying to talk about mentality. Okay. When a, a young girl makes a mistake, the mother will caution her by saying that your mates at your age, maybe at 20 or at 21 or 18, I am already in my husband's house. Mm -hmm. At 15, I have already given birth to two children okay so she starts at that tender age to develop the mentality that marriage is the only solution to her problem that even when she is walking along the road and a guy will be like hello her mind goes to husband anything that comes to her mind is husband so and you know that this thing is psychological so when she marries in her mind she has arrived Hence, husband becomes her husband becomes the end, the beginning and end of her solution. Oh, sorry, the beginning and end of her salvation. So there is nothing else you're talking about other than marriage. And that is why in a society, when you see a lady who who has achieved fame and um who is wealthy and all that, very influential and all that, and is not married, you know, in a society. When she passes or she comes up, people will ask, where is her husband and she's not married? People regard her as somebody who is not yet complete, somebody who is not yet fulfilled. So that is one of the major factors that is affecting that, that mentality. So it is also high time that mother started using some good examples. Maybe if, if somebody does something wrong, at 21, some of your mates are pilots. In, in America, some of your mates, you know, we <laughs> yes. Oh, <man. laughs> uh -huh. At my so, age, I was getting a master at your age. Exactly, I exactly. Dr. Exactly. Ma is a philosophy lecturer in Nigeria. I mean, I, yeah. I don't need to know the age, but she's married. It's okay. You can go yeah. for it. It's so true. Oh, and I, I and I think you're, you're, you know, spot on on how you know, we, we need to start changing this narrative. And that's oh. pretty much my 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 hope. I don't want to say my goal because it may take another generation, but in our generation, my hope is that young ladies can, you know, have stories like yours and say, okay, well, it's possible. Even if they aspire, their dreams, their hope can be crushed because around them, they don't hear that voice. Um, I want to also go into uh, um, your professional path view. Um, also a researcher, and you have a few uh, publications such as Understanding Ethics in Praise of African Feminism, Feminism in Simone de Beauvoir, in, in Simone de Beauvoir and Evaluation. So you have quite a few uh, public publications under your belt. You tell us more about your research work and, and anything you are planning to work on and, and how can we you know, support you? Okay. Now, those ones I listed there, they are just just some some of them when it comes to publications i have over 20 journal articles mm -hmm. to my credit 
now I met a research, a, a co a, a co research work anyway, but I was the chief or primary researcher on female genital mutilation in a bony state and how it affects the stability of marriage. Now, mm. I have another research work that I want to work on. And that research work, um, I need it to be funded. is mm. on domestic violence and how it affects women development. Because recently, I have been seeing that women have been dying out of, uh, or because of domestic violence, okay? And it's high time we started talking about this domestic violence through writing so that both people in the rural area and uh, people in the urban area, there are people too who do not even know that domestic violence is something that cannot be tolerated. It's something that women should not accept. So that is one of the reasons I want to go into this research. And um, from, the, from all indications, it is very important to note that domestic violence is affecting the development of women. If it doesn't um, lead to the death of that person, it can lead to um, one, being physically damaged, well, as in one of the body parts being physically damaged. There are people with one eye, one of their arms or legs have been amputated because of domestic violence. So it is high time that women, you know, we started helping women to know that domestic violence is not is is something that affects fundamental human rights. It violates the fundamental human rights. And the research work to fund it takes about um six thousand five hundred dollars for the research work to be done or six thousand euros for it to be carried out because I will go to the rural areas where women will be questioned. Okay, I will talk to them in my language, in Igbo language, that is the language of people in the Eastern part of Nigeria, where I talk to them in their own language because I wouldn't go to them and start speaking English. Some of them may not actually understand mm -hmm. why some will understand. So I will talk to them one-on-one -on -one where they will tell me their experiences. They may come out anonymous because they, yeah. some, some of them may be afraid, just like when I, I did that of female genital mutilation, some of them were scared. I remember, talking to one woman, she said, ah, do I want her to go to prison? I said, no, please, that just tell me about your experiences. Nobody will know your name. I'm not even, don't tell me your name. She said, I, what about her face? I said, please, just tell me on my own. Nobody will hear about it. I'm not using anything against you. Before she now opened, even when she was talking, she was so uncomfortable, okay? So it is high time that we started um, re-sensitize mm -hmm. and keep on, helping women to know about some of these things that affects women development that's wonderful well i i believe in in what you are doing and i'm gonna do my best to support you because you. I, I, I domestic violence people usually think it's just husband and wife it can be siblings it can be uh oh. you know brother sister and can be um you know it can be even a cousins yeah so neighbors um but we we certainly have to start talking about it and i am i stand here saying you have my full support and we will do our best to support you here um could you briefly tell us more as we are about to wrap up a little more a little bit about the result of your research on female um, genital mutilation <laughs> sorry okay. I thought, uh, what did you find? What 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 did what's your conclusions briefly? Okay. I know we can have a whole conversation about that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Female genital mutilation from the research work from my inquiries mm -hmm. in Ebony State, precisely. Ebony State is a state in the eastern part of Nigeria. So mm -hmm. it is believed that they believe that women go or or they are in those. Some of these people that carry out these things are also women. So these women who are quacks go about mutilating or cutting the genital part of the women, mm. the young girls or the young, the new wives, in order to make them marriageable. Okay. So the essence of that is to make them marriageable, to make them not to be reserved and not to be promiscuous. So the research is now centered on 
its effect on the stability of marriage. So we discovered that ironically, instead of making female genital mutilation to make women to be marriageable, it makes them unmarriageable. Okay, now from the experiences, okay, even when I was listening to some of them, I was, I was emotional, okay, because one of the women told me that when they carried out the, the, the genital cutting, okay, cutting out the vulva and the rest of them in order to make her not to be promiscuous and all that. So when she now got married, okay, after yeah. her first baby, that she started bleeding. Okay, mm. because that's that court. I don't know how they do it, but that court caused a lot of bleeding that yeah. she bled for 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 some time. That okay, after when she had her first baby, her second baby, I don't know if she had up to four. Then the doctor advised her for her own sake that she should stop. Then, even when it comes to her conjugal rights with her husband, she said she had to stop all those, okay, because she started bleeding that mm -hmm. she had gone to the hospitals, nothing, in, there was no solution. Yes. told me that she goes to pray every time for, 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 for her to have divine intervention, okay? Now, that is her own part. But why I was angry with her is that, because I'm still angry with her right now, is that even when she, she is passing through that thing, she still allowed them to mutilate her daughter. Oh! Her daughter. Yes! She allowed them to mutilate her daughters. Why did she do that? Are, yes, her daughters are like my contemporaries now. I now asked her why. You are passing through pains and you allow your daughters to pass through that. She said, because of it was a norm. Okay, if she refused that, that she would be excommunicated yes. from the community. Okay, so oh, that is, you know, oh. so I felt so bad. Now that is her own side. Then another one. Also, is like even when it comes to you know having this conjugal activity or something. So that, mm -hmm. Yes, the, the 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 woman who has been mutilated finds it very difficult. Okay, she finds it very very difficult to even enjoy her marriage. That that's mm -hmm. even when I I happen to also interview some men, and some of the mm -hmm. men told me that they are not even that that they are scared of marrying women who have been mutilated. Oh, that's have, that's. That's a great point. Yeah, we need to yeah, say that. No. Yes, they said that they are scared. One of them told me that despite that one of his relations was married, that when he wants to marry, that he will always want to ask the woman if she was circumcised, because it is popularly called female circumcision, that if she, she is circumcised, that he will run away from the, the, the person. The person may not actually know the reason. So this thing, this particular act does not necessarily make them marriageable. It makes them unmarriageable and makes the marriage unstable. It has led to so many broken homes. Okay, it has led to premature death. It has led to bleeding. It has led to so many even infections. Yeah, so some infections, okay? That some because, because some of these women use all these uh, old uh, instruments, this instrument that have not been sterilized to practice this uh, this it's weekend very it's very human it's very human yeah, and human and um yeah. is the practice still strong in that area um, in that area well or it has decreased that it has yes it has decreased despite that the the former governor of the state the wife of the governor of the state took it as a a a, a duty a point of mm -hmm. duty to punish whoever that does that but from what they told me some of the women said they now do it secretly. Okay. Mm. So they now do it secretly. So, so it's illegal to do that. Yeah, it's, in, it's in, illegal. In is it illegal yes. across Nigeria or is it just a state? It is not illegal. Very okay. illegal. Even in the okay. church, some of it has been preached that women, even over the radio, I've heard it severally that women are not okay. to be sacrificed. People should say no to that it is an inhuman act, it is a wicked act, that people should say no to that. And it is only men that are meant to be circumcised based on their religion anyway. If, yeah, if they want. Well, that's very, like I say, um, it's so brief that I'm sure you have so much more to say. Uh, but we, you know, we have a, I just want to, to remain in our time frame, but I enjoy 
you know, learn, hearing your stories. Uh, there's always more, of course, that we can can share. Is there anything you want you, that we haven't touched on? You really want us to know about you, about uh, anything that we discussed today? Well, what I want to talk about is that I'm, despite that I'm passionate about women and gender issues, but I want to point out that women should please start, it's high time women started relearning. Sorry, they will unlearn mm -hmm. and now relearn. Because just like an unknown philosopher says that the 21st century illiterate will not be one who cannot read and write, but one who refuses to learn, unlearn and relearn. So it is high time women started unlearning some of these, some of these, um, uh, uh, what, what would I call, so, because it is not education, okay? It is kind of biased. They are being biased. So it's high time they start. They started on learning some of these things and and re start re relearning the new thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is high time that women started being humane. We have to embrace humanism. Yes, we have to embrace humanism. It's not all about uh, chanting feminism, women empowerment. Then the question is what. What, what are women doing about that? Okay, in one of my articles called End of Feminism and Sustainable Development, my argument is that feminism has come to an end if women continue to fight against themselves. Okay, so when we talk about female genital mutilation, we see that women are dead. They are the perpetrators. When we talk about obnoxious widowhood practices, women are the ones practicing all this. Okay, just like a popular a philosopher called Chimwizu, in his book called Anatomy of Female Powers, he analyzed that men have the power, but women have the powers behind the throne. So women are in charge of the society. Women are the formators of the society. So it is high time that women started changing the narrative for there to be the, not just development, but sustainable development in the society. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I enjoy Hearing that, and I agree once again that we tend to feel powerless. We feel, but it's not the truth. Um, has in has uh, daughters, has mothers, has wife. There's so much we can do to change a narrative. It's that with what we tell ourselves, what we tell to others. I want to I want to uh, close on a little. Uh, if you allow me, a little happy note. So you say your mother, and and uh, you want to. Do you want to talk a little bit about it or your family life and how do you, you know, uh, my, how do you, just for some time an idea, how do you like it and how do you manage it and uh, with all the different hats you're wearing? Because it can be kind of impressive, you know, and we can hear that you definitely are a thinker. So, um, okay, I should talk about myself as a mother. Yeah, has a mother, has a wife. Yeah, just a little fun. Like, okay. you know, I, I, do you have a daughter or I, how do you yeah. balance everything? And okay. What's the fun yes. part about all that? <laughs> okay, I'm a mother of four. I have mm -hmm. three boys and a girl. The girl is the last. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, motherhood in, or parenting in the 21st century is very challenging. It's not easy. Even, uh, even before I started uh, coming out for this interview, my daughter has been pursuing me. <laughs> You know, sometimes I will prepare to go to work. I'll first of all back her. Even mm -hmm. after wearing my, my clothes, when I'm there, I'm already ready to go. But you see her cry. I'll still do my motherly duties to her. You know, it's not easy. But the only thing is that, yes, I have um, an understanding husband. My husband will always call himself. He's a feminist. Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. He understands everything and, and he has been supportive. Okay. So I will I'm giving him thumbs up. So he's trying very well on his part. So for us to to do that and both two of us also work in an institution. So he understands also what it takes for me to be a researcher and all that. Okay. So it's not easy, but we balance everything some time ago we all we, we also go for domestic help domestic staff who can help us to do some of this is in order to balance everything so wow. we just everything is all about planning anyway we just yeah. plan with your partner and once you plan very well you see yourself uh, coming out successful beautiful well dr may it was a pleasure 
to talk to you today um, and uh, on this new episode of Be the Changemaker. Um, I, we learned so much from you about you know, what it may take to uh, go from being a little girl that has dream and hope and actually seeing yourself uh, not uh, getting to a place where you are fulfilling. And, and, uh, and uh, we understand that we women, uh, we, it's time for us to raise our voice not because it's not about not being heard it's about taking action as well changing the narrative and there's so much we we still have to do but the first thing is to make sure that who we are is what we are truly saying we are so thank you again so much for your time today dr ma <laughs> thank you very much dr jess for this wonderful opportunity i'm you're grateful welcome. you're welcome bye-bye <laughs> all right bye